All right, so this is going to be lesson seven from our current unit three intro to programming. And the key for today is about parameters. Okay, so obviously the more you can use a function, the more useful it is. We talked about that with the, um, when we were doing like draw diamond and draw snowflake and stuff like that, where the more useful the function was, the more, or the more you could use the function, the more useful it was. You can make functions even more useful by adding parameters, which means giving it an extra piece of information when you call it or rather writing a function so that it's ready to accept an extra piece of information. Up until now, we've just had move forward, which move forward 50 pixels. But the function is actually written to receive a parameter of any amount that will allow you to use the move forward command to draw a line of whatever length you want. That makes this move forward function far more useful. The more ways you can use it, the more valuable it is. Other topics that we're gonna talk about, well, library and API. So API stands for application program interface. And we aren't really using one, sort of. The most common way you'd see API used would be some sort of large organization making an API available to developers or web designers. Like if you ever go to a website that looks kind of janky, but it still has Google Maps in it, like how did this janky website have Google Maps? It's using the Google Maps API. Google Maps makes their API available publicly for others to use to embed into their websites. Okay, that is an API. Uh, in this sense, they're kind of referring to the blocks they give you. It's really more of a library. Okay, a library in programming is a pre-written set of code that you can access to make your life easier. Okay, there are, if you've heard of jQuery, that is probably the most famous JavaScript library. It is a lot of program programming that are like, it's like a toolbox. It's a quality of life mod, if you're familiar with video games. It is pre-written stuff to make things easier to save you time. In this case, it's the blocks they give you are, like you can't access the actual function for that move forward. You can't get to that definition. It's built in as a library function. You don't need to change it. It's, it just works. That's the key. Okay, uh, receiving a parameter, that's gonna be essentially everything. So documentation. Documentation is what the reference for programming is called. In App Lab, all you need to do to get to the documentation is mouse over whatever block you're interested in. It will give you a brief insight into what it does. But if you click on examples, you will go to the actual documentation. And this is what for real documentation looks like. It will give you an example of how to use that piece of code, whatever it is. Okay. Uh, it's a brief exp explanation and um, some examples of the code working. That is the documentation. It is the reference document. I don't know why it uses the term documentation. Like um, you are actually recording something that happened. You're documenting it. No, it's just the reference document is what documentation means. And hexadecimal. So hexadecimal is its own thing. It's crazy and uh, moderately useful. Hexadecimal is base 16. Okay, we've done binary where each digit 
can do between zero and one. You're familiar with decimal, where each digit is zero to nine, 10 different digits. Hexadecimal, each digit is zero to 15. You run out of numerals at nine, and so you continue on all the way up to the letter F. So the letter A is actually 10. B is 11, all the way up to F is 15. So with one place, you can make numbers between zero and 15. And that means with two places, you can make numbers between zero and 255. Which means with two places, you can replace eight bits. So two characters between zero and F can make every value from zero to 255. And you'll start to see a lot of sort of these common shapes of numbers and values show up. You don't really need to know how to hexadecimal anything. You do need to know that letters are higher than numbers. Letters are higher than numbers. There you go, hexadecimal. Okay, so let's start using some functions with parameters. Let's go on to bubble two. Here you'll see the move forward now accepts a parameter. And we need to write or call it with a number large enough for it to go off the screen. Let's try 200. And 200 doesn't quite do it. Let's try 250. There we go. Um, obviously, a much larger number would also work. It's not super critical that you get it exactly to the edge, but the point is you're trying lengths of or uh, forwards of different lengths. That's it. Not a huge uh, challenge on this one. Okay, bubble three. So we have move forward receives a parameter a number that is the number of pixels. Now we also get turn right and turn left. It's parameter. It is expecting a number that will be interpreted as an angle in degrees of amount of turning between zero and 360 or actually it could be more if you did, you know, 540, it would go around one and a half times, so it's pointless. You could also do negative, it would go the other way. Uh, but for our purposes, it is expecting a positive number for the amount of turning either left or right. So if we are trying to make this triangle, it says, well, knowing what we know, we know it's 100 pixels long. So we'll start with a move forward of 100 pixels. That'll get us to there. And to make an equilateral triangle, it's 60 on the inside. And so that's supplemental is 120. So we'll turn right 120. And that puts us there. And let's just do this twice more. And there you go, triangle. Okay, so what do we get this one? We get um, some other blocks that will allow us to change the color of the pen and its width, the width of the pen. Okay, and so this might be a lot here as we start to talk about color. You'll use color a lot of different ways, pen and dot and, I guess we don't have fill, but regardless, there are four different ways to tell App Lab a color or what color you want. The first one is just the name of the color. There are a lot more colors than you would think. So if you, there's obviously red and uh, let's make a pen width so we can play around with different colors. So there's obviously red and blue and green and so on, but there are things like, Sky blue is a color, I believe. Yeah. Um, lime green. And so 
I have yet to find a list of the specific colors that App Lab will accept by name. I've looked for it for a little while. It might be out there. But I don't know. It's kind of fun to guess. Like, does it have um, sea green? Does it have sea green? I can't remember. But for our purposes, we can. It does have sea green, although it's not a very good sea green. Anyway, um, for today, we will mostly be using just the names of colors. But you will need to at least understand how the other types work. The second type we've talked about briefly, I can't remember when, but RGB triplet, where you, the computer's expecting three numbers and these are parameters, just like we did with our move forward function. It is expecting three values. The first on a scale of zero to 255 is the amount of redness. The second on a scale of zero to 255 is the amount of greenness. And the third on a scale of zero to 255 is the amount of blueness. So this value right here, all red, zero green, zero blue is red. Okay, so there's that. The third type um, of way to enter a color is RGBA, red, green, blue, alpha. The first three are the same as red RGB, amount of red, amount of green, amount of blue, all zero to 255. But the last number it is going to receive is the alpha, which is the opacity. And it is expecting a number between zero and one. Zero being invisible, one being opaque, and everything in between on a scale of zero to one, its level of opacity, 0.5 is of course half. If you don't include that fourth parameter, it just assumes that it's one. It will take it as opaque. Okay, but if you do include a fourth parameter, it needs to be between zero and one. I don't know how many decimals AppLab goes to. And I think if you put in a number bigger than one, it will just accept it as one. Yeah. So if you want something of some partial opacity, needs to be between zero and one. And the final way of adding or telling AppLab a color is with hexadecimal, okay? Uh, again, I will explain it here. If you don't get it, that's fine. The key takeaway again is numbers are higher than letters. Okay, so in a six digit, I guess we'd call it digit, hexadecimal code, which is denoted by the pound sign or hashtag at the beginning. And the fact that there are six characters all between zero and F. The first two are the amount of red. The second two are the amount of green. And the third two are the amount of blue. It is still a red, green, blue triplet, except with only two characters for each. The highest number you can make with two hexadecimal characters is FF. The lowest number you can make is zero, zero. Everything is in between that. Just like with decimal numbers, the farther to the left you get, it is uh, more valuable. So this F is actually in the 16s column, and this F is in the ones column for the red color. You'll usually see both the same um, and you almost never will be expected to like find a color and then come up with its hexadecimal value. You will need the type of question you will see on the AP exam is which of these three hexadecimal combinations would be pink and it would have three different combinations only one of them where red is the strongest color okay so something like um a a um one one three three this is a lot most of the way red very little green 
and very little but slightly more blue, that's going to be a very red, kind of darkish with a little purple maroon. There we go. Okay, so even though you don't need to know this is maroon, you would be able to tell that this is maroon as compared to this. Okay, this is a mostly blue color with almost none of the other two colors. So this is going to be darkish, just almost dark blue. There we go. Okay, uh, so either way, four ways to tell App Lab a color. The name, RGB, RGBA, and hexadecimal. Um, where were we? Okay. So blue square, super easy. Um, blue is the color. Pen width, um, I don't know, 10 maybe. And this looks a little bit longer than, oh, I'm zoomed in. Uh, a little bit longer than what we have, maybe 80. And let's see what that looks like. Yep, there we go. Then we need to turn right. 90 is fine. And do that three more times. There you go. Blue square. Lovely. Okay, bubble five. Again, if we're going fast, that's fine. You'll have time. Well, I can answer questions. It's not a big deal. Okay, we get even another command. This command is dot. It will make a circle the size that we tell it wherever the turtle is at that time. The parameter, the value it's expecting is the radius of the dot. Not uh, super important, except you know that it's the size. And let's try to recreate this thing right here. So there isn't a command to make the background a certain color. You can just make a dot that's so big you can't see the edge. In this case, let's, well, first let's change the color. So pen color, I would call this magenta. And it definitely has magenta as like, I don't know, the fifth most famous computer color. And let's try a dot. Let's see what five does. Okay, five is super tiny. There we go. Let's see what 100 does. Okay, 100 super, not quite. Um, I think 400 is probably enough. You can put in 10,000, but there's no reason to make. So anytime you are programming and you have what you would consider objects, which are, you know, might actually be something, but some other, uh, some entity, we'll call it an entity, moving around, the computer will keep track of it, even if it's off the screen. And you're using computer resources to, you know, memory and whatnot, processing to keep track of it, even though you can't see it. So you would want to limit the amount of off-screen processing the computer has to do. So there's no reason to make it a 100,000 pixel radius circle. So whatever's big enough to cover it is fine. So we have our magenta background. Let's start, or next, we need to switch the pen back to white. So we'll switch uh white there and we need a dot um i think 100 maybe let's see what 100 does uh it's a little big it's probably like 50 okay so 50 there we go and we need to move forward let's move forward let's move forward 50 that feels about right. And do a dot of 25 and see what happens. Okay, so we move forward 50, which was the radius of the first dot, which means the cursor went exactly to the edge, which if we want it to look like this one needs to go further than the center, the turtle needs to go further, farther 
than the edge of the first circle. So we need to have it move forward more. If we did 75, which is the size of the two circles together, it will be exactly on the edge. So it needs to be smaller than the sum of the two. So let's try 65. And when you are designing stuff like this in App Lab and digitally in general, it's gonna be a lot of this sort of guessing and walking it in type of thing. And so we have there and we need to move forward again. I think the next circle is probably 15, which means we need another forward that is more than the size of the previous dot. Let's try maybe 35. And then we can make a dot of 15. It's still gonna be a white dot. Mm, that's not too bad. That's close enough for, uh, for government work. And yeah, all right, so there you go. Puzzle five, done. Puzzle six. Okay, here we go. Hexadecimal colors. All you need to know, letters are higher than numbers. And in a six digit hexadecimal code, the first two are the redness, the second two are the greenness, and the third two are the blueness. So based on these, you can tell this is a mostly blue, a, still a lot green and no red. This is a most of the way red, very little green and no blue and so on. So if we are trying to make this shape, let's go ahead and set the color to one of these. Which one of these looks like a dark red? Well, this is blue is the biggest value here. Red is the biggest value here. So it's probably this one. This blue is the biggest value. Blue is still the biggest value here, except even though it's still pretty low, green is the biggest value there. So it's probably this one. So we can just put that into our hexadecimal format and a dot that is big enough to cover the screen. Bingo. Okay, so now we want a green color. Again, this is blue. We just use this one. This one is more, no. This one is the only one of these five where green is the largest value. Okay, it's CC is the green value. It barely has any red and it has no blue. So let's go ahead and change the pen color to this. And do a dot of, that's probably 100. There we go. And now we need to figure out which one of these remaining is the blue one. So this one, this one, and this one are all blue. This one, because there's so many that are high up in the letters, it's going to be bright. Um, this one is going to be darker. And this one's going to be in the middle. Like if you add up all of the values, I think this one is probably the brightest. Let's see what it is. And a dot of, I don't know, 50 maybe. Uh, I think that's too bright. What's the medium one? Um, red, green, blue. I think this one's in the medium. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think that's it. Okay, uh, letters are higher than numbers, hexadecimal. Okay, bubble seven. Arcs, we get another tool, the arc left and arc right tools, which are expecting two parameters and the order matters. Okay, if you mouse over, or even if you don't mouse over, you can see 
angle and radius are the two values that it is expecting. And if you check out the documentation, it will show you how it's used. And you can even do spirals, which I didn't know that was a thing. So the first value is the angle. That is how much arcage you want, where halfway around a semicircle would be 180 degrees, a quarter circle would be 90 degrees, uh, and all the way around 360 degrees, and so on. The second value, the second parameter is radius, and that is how big the arc is from a, an imaginary center point. And so let's just go ahead and throw some values on there and see what happens. Okay, uh, it does tell you the colors are powder blue and purple. So let's start with a background, which we know how to do. Pen color of powder blue. I don't think it's case sensitive. And a dot of 400, 500, it's fine. And there you go. Okay, and we know it tells us the arc color is purple. And let's just throw an arc left on there and see what happens. Okay, clearly the pen width is wider than whatever the default is. Let's see what 10 looks like. Maybe a little narrower. We'll see what happens. Okay. The other thing you'll notice is that it's all relative to the direction the turtle is facing when you start. So if we want to create this shape, we are gonna need to turn the turtle to the east before we start the arc. So before we arc, we need to turn right 90 degrees, which is the default. Okay, and we're getting closer. And the angle of arc is we want it to be to go 180 degrees. And we, I'm not sure about the size, but we'll stick with it and let's do an arc right of the same, not turn right, arc right of the same amount, 180 degrees and 25 pixel radius. And that looks good, except the final product needs to have three lefts and three rights, left, right, left, right, left, right. And we're going to run out of space if we keep making 25 pixel arcs. So let's bring that down to, let's say, 15. 15 pixels in radius. And so once again, this radius is a distance from an imaginary center point that the turtle never goes to. The turtle, the arc starts from where the turtle is when you tell it to start. The size, you're just gonna sort of figure out. So we, at this point, have a left and a right. Let's make two more of each. There you go. Okay, so this will be here. We're going to make two circles that are partially opaque that have a partial opacity. So that means we are going to use the alpha RGBA, okay, RGB alpha, which you can either enter from a pen color and change it to the four parameter version where you still have the four numbers separated by commas, or just use the pen RGB block where it literally gives you a place for all three colors plus the opacity. And we want, doesn't give us any values for these. So 
let's start by let's see if we can figure out a uh, pinkish color. So pinkish is going to be let's make it mostly red and uh, some blue. Let's do half blue and um, half opacity. And let's make a dot of 50 and see how close we are. Okay, not too bad. It's a little closer to purple, so let's add a little bit of blue. Uh, it's not terrible. It's actually probably a little less opaque, so maybe 0 0.4. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay, and in order to do the next one, let's do a move forward. And we recall from the snowman one where if we move forward, the, um, the size of that dot, it will put the cursor exactly on the edge of that dot. So that's actually what we want here. Let's move forward 50. And you'll notice that it actually makes the trail of the path of the turtle because we are moving with the pen down. So if we don't want that trail, we need to do pen up at some point before the move forward. It could be at the very beginning or there is fine. It's easier to keep track of if you put it right before when you move. But as long as you pen up before you move forward, it'll be fine. There we go. And now we need another dot and a new color. And so this color is certainly more blue. So let's max out blue and it's purplish. So that means some red, I don't know, 150. Let's see what happens. And we're keeping it at a middle amount of opacity. That's not too bad. It's a little bluer. Maybe a little less red to get it closer to blue. Eh, that's not too bad. Not perfect. But the idea of having a fourth parameter in the pen color parameters um, will let you adjust opacity. There you go, RGB alpha. Okay, bubble nine. And, okay, so this is something that's going to be with us forever, or at least while you're programming. We may have brought this up before. Normally in a Cartesian plane, you are used to the bottom left being zero, zero and x going up in this direction on the x-axis and y going up in this direction on the y-axis. In programming, 0, 0 is over here in the top left corner. x still goes up as you go to the right, but y goes up as you go downward. And it's just something, you're, it's weird and you're going to get used to it, it's fine. If you're ever not sure where something is on this canvas, as long as you are not actively running some program, in other words, if you hit reset and it says run, you're not running it. If you mouse over the canvas, you will see the X and Y coordinate of wherever your mouse is. And you can see when you go all the way up to the top left corner, it gets very, very close to zero, zero. You can't actually get zero, zero. Uh, maybe you can, I don't know. Darn close, zero, zero. And all the way to the right side, it will be 320 in the X and zero on the Y. That is because our App Lab emulator will always be, have a resolution of 320 by its height of 450. These are hard-coded values. No matter how zoomed in you are, no matter the size of your window or Chrome or what have you, it is always going to be 320 wide and 450 tall. That's good. It allows you to have a consistent location no matter what screen you're working on. 
Uh, key takeaway is that zero zero is in the top left and Y gets higher as you go down the screen. Okay. Normally in programming, the location of something would be like screen width percentage over. So if you have a, a screen width of a certain number of pixels, some button will be one tenth of that over. So as you change it, it scales. Okay. Sometimes it'll be absolute. Like even if I, as I change the width of the screen, the emulator doesn't change. Okay. But in App Lab, you can count on the canvas on the emulator being 320 by 450. Okay. And again, if you ever forget, just mouse over and you'll see okay, this point right here is 203, 116, and so on. Okay. So that gives us the opportunity of using other tools like move to move to accepts two parameters and will move the turtle to a specific x y location the first parameter will be accepted as the x value and the second parameter accepted as the y value makes sense we almost always look at things as x y makes sense to make the parameters in that order but if you ever forget look at the block it will tell you. But uh, there's also move, not yet, but there is another one that's move, which is based on the relative location of the turtle. Move two is the absolute location of where you want to move the turtle. So no matter where it is, it will go to that spot. More on that later. For now, we need to try to recreate this uh, smiley face. So let's take care of some obvious stuff. Does it tell us it's supposed to be powder blue, but doesn't. Let's just go ahead and set the color to powder blue and a dot big enough to cover the screen. Lovely. And let's change it back to yellow. I'm sure it has yellow as one of its named colors. And so if the entire width is 320, 320 pixels wide, that means if we wanted a circle that touched both sides at exactly the edge, that means we would want one with a radius of half of that or 160. So if we made a circle with a radius of 160, a dot with its parameter of 160, it would touch the side exactly. Let's do that just for fun, even though clearly it's not going to be that. So we've changed the color to yellow. We have a dot of 160 and it touches the side of the screen exactly. Now the dot we want is slightly smaller. I'm gonna guess it's 150 because that's a nice, even number, even though 160 is also an even number. Um, there we go, there's that. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me, three other features here. We have two circles for the eye and an arc that's like that. Okay, so we are gonna do some very light guess math where we're going to do move two, but we need to guess the locations for the various things. So we're going to do a move two to make, to make this eye, then a move two to make this eye, and then we need to move to one side of the mouth to do the mouth. Okay. So if this is the center line of the screen, that is a height of half of 450, so 225. This entire line all the way across is y equals 225. And our center line, because we're working 320 left to right, our center line is x equals 160. And if you're completely lost on this math, that's fine. 
Um, just try to stay with me. So the center line is X equals 160. So we know that the Y location here is going to be a little bit less than 225. And the X location for here is going to be the same amount above 160 as this one is below 160, if we want it symmetrical. So let's just start guessing. Or you just put your, your cursor sort of, well, you can't have the window up and it running, but something like that. So we need to, like we saw before, need to do pen up before we move to. Okay, so let's move to, uh, we know this center point needs to be, let's go to this one. We know its X location is gonna be 160 plus a certain amount. Let's try 180. And its Y location is gonna be less than 225. Let's try 210. And I'm guessing that's gonna get us right there. And we want to make a dot that is pen color black and dot of, let's see what 10 does. Um, just sort of guessing. Okay, so clearly the dot needs to be bigger. Let's try 20. And I think it needs to be higher up and definitely farther to the right. So if 180 is... 20 pixels to the right of center. Um, 200 would be 40 pixels to the right of center. Not terrible. Let's go a little bit higher. So we'll take a little bit away from the Y value. Let's see what 200 looks like. Let's zoom out a little bit so we have a chance. Uh, that's not too bad. Okay, so we need to now move to this spot. We know they're going to have the same Y value because they are at the same height. And we know this one is going to be the same distance. Wow, that's a horrible line. The same distance to away from the center line as the other one was. Because our center line is 160, and this one is 200. That means this one is 40 pixels to the right of center. We want this other X value to be 40 pixels to the left of center, which puts it at 120. So we'll do a move to uh, an X value of 120, which even though we're doing our measurement from our center line, it's still 120 from the center. And this one was 200, I mean, 120 from the left. X is still measured from the left. We are just trying to solve for it based on our center line. And it's going to be the same height as this one. So it's still 200, measure 200 pixels from the top. And okay, I didn't move to, forgot the dot. 20. Mm. I think that looks a little bit narrow. So let's add, let's move the one on the right farther to the right. So 210 is farther than that. And let's move the one on the left a little bit left. So 110 is to the left of 120. I think that's pretty good. Okay, so now we need to pick one side of this arc to jump to it doesn't matter and we need to solve for this i think that this point is going to be directly in the center of the screen vertically so we'll call that y equals 225 and if this X is 120 and this is five, I don't know, let's call this 40. So let's have, let's jump to 40 to 25. Move to 
forty two two five. Um, not terrible. I think it's probably a little lower. So two, two thirty five is a little lower. And it's probably a little more to the right, but we can fix that in a second. So maybe 50 pixels from the left. Okay, and in order to do this arc, we need to have it facing, I'm not crazy about this spot, but we'll move it in a second. We need to have it facing south. So we need to turn, okay? We have turn left and turn right, but now we have turn two, which turn two is an absolute value, meaning no matter which way it's pointing, turn two, 180 will be pointing due south. And I'm not crazy. This is definitely farther over than uh, 40. Oh, it didn't change. Maybe 50. Okay. And so the way we're going to figure out how big the arc needs to be is so the radius of an arc is its distance from the center point. And right now, my cursor is at 50. Okay. And our center point is 160. So that means I'm 110 pixels from our center line. So that's what I'm going to make the arc radius. So I'm pointing south and I'm going to arc left. Angle 180 because that is, you know, a semicircle. And the radius, because I want it centered, whatever the center is, let's see what 110 does. And okay, uh, it didn't draw because we have pen up. Okay, dot doesn't require the pen to be down. Uh, everything else does. So after we move to the start of our arc, which this is where we're starting the arc, we need to put the pen back down either before or after turn two, it doesn't matter, but before we arc. And okay, we're getting close. Definitely need a wider pen. So before we arc, we need to pen width to, I don't know, eight, 10. Mm, definitely bigger than that. Maybe 12. Mm, we'll call that close enough. We could, uh, maybe 15. Um, as long as you have something that's close to that, it shows that you understand what's going on. Okay, uh, one more challenge, and then we'll be done, more or less. Okay, so it does say, do whatever you like. No, you cannot do whatever you like. You can do this. We are going to solve this and not terribly difficult. We'll just go through it one at a time. And uh, yeah, so how are we gonna start? We're gonna start with pen color. Do we have other tools now? No, same ones. Okay, pen color. Um, how about light green? Will light green work for this one? Yeah, there we go. Light green looks like the color for this one. And we are currently right here. Let's just take care of these in order, or maybe we'll take care of the 
purple ones first. If I want to make this, I guess, letter I, uh, from where I am, I'm going to need to jump to either the bottom of the letter I or the top of the letter I. So I need to do pen up before I move. Then I'm going to move to, um, well, just guessing, let's say this is an 80 pixel line and I want it a little bit down. So maybe this is 100 pixels from the top and I know it's centered. So it is going to be 160 from the left, which is its X value centered and 100 from the top. Uh, it's actually probably a little lower, but either way, we can change the pen color to purple um, anywhere, really anywhere at this point. And let's do a move forward. Move backwards is here now, so that's not super useful, but whatever. Move forward of 80. See what we got. Okay, need to do pen down. Always forget pen down. Some point after the move to, but before the move forward, we need to put the pen back down. And definitely need a wider pen. So pen width. And let's go with eight for the, they're all pretty much the same. And that is not bad. Okay, so we do have show and hide. All this does is show or hide the turtle. And I'm gonna say from here on out, you're pretty much gonna wanna hide the turtle the whole time. So there's no reason not to start the entire program with a hide. That way it just, the turtle won't be there and that's fine. If you, for some reason are lost of where your turtle went or where your turtle ended up after the program ran, uh, you can get rid of that. But I think that's not terrible. It's actually probably a little lower. So instead of 160, 100, how about 160, 120? That's lower. 120 is lower than, yeah, there we go. I like that. All right. So let's, hmm, what's the best way to do this? Let's, well, we already have the purple pen. Let's go and do the other two letters. So the letter C here, wow, this is all over the place. Let's just like the smiley face need to jump to either here or here. And let's, uh, well, we know we're gonna move to, so we have to pen up before we go anywhere. So we'll pen up and move to, um, this is a little bit left of center. So it's gonna be less than 160 on the X, maybe 150. And uh, if we're at 450 for the bottom, maybe 430. And then actually I'm gonna get rid of hide at this point, even though I said otherwise, uh, to see how close we are. Okay, I think I want it to be a little bit lefter. So how about 140 is a little bit more to the left than 150 on the X and probably a little bit higher up. So maybe 425. Okay. That's fine. And so now we want to do our arc just like before. We need to turn to due west, which is 270 or negative 90. That's fine. And then we want to arc to the right. We want to definitely do a 180 degree arc. Um, Okay, and we need to do pen down again. I always forget pen down anytime before the arc. And that's definitely too small. Let's double it. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay, so let's try to get to here. So if we start here as the starting point for our left right arc for s we know that this is going to be the same distance from the center point as this so 140 from 160 is 20 this way so let's go 20 that way so our move to is going to be 180 and at the same height so we're going to move to 180 425 and pen up Pen up, move to 180, 425. See how close that gets us. Okay. And so we know that the radius here is going to be half as much as this, but it doesn't really do, it kind of has like a flat part first. So we know our left right arc is going to be a 180 degree arc, but with a radius of 25 instead of 50. So, um, okay, we're already facing the correct direction. We don't need to change anything. Let's arc left. We know it's a semicircle, so 180 and um, 25. Okay, we need pen down. I just remembered anytime after the move to. let's start with a move forward before we arc because you can see if we just did an arc left and an arc right of the same size uh, 180 if we do an arc left and arc right it doesn't really work let's start and end it with a small move forward of like 10 Uh, maybe 15. Yep, and then end it with a 15. There we go, that's not too bad. It may actually be more than that, but we'll we'll work with that. Okay, so now the heart, we're gonna do a move two for sure. So we're gonna do pen up, move two. Let's just do, let's just call it pen up, move two, pen down is gonna be our combination always. Pen up, move two. Pen down. Okay, and how about let's move to this point of the heart. We know its X value is going to be 160 because it's centered, and its Y value is going to be somewhere in the middle-ish, maybe a little bit above 225. How about 200? So let's move to what do we say? 160 is centered on the X. 200 is a little bit above center on the Y. And maybe a little higher, but that's fine. Okay, so we pen up, move to, pen down. That's going to be a standard. And in order to do this arc, it's going to be a combination of an arc right and a forward. But in order to do this arc right, we need to turn to 45 degrees. Okay, uh, we need to change the pen color to red. And let's do an arc right. And even though it's small, it's still a full 180, I need a different color. It's still a 180 degree arc this way. So this arc right is gonna be 180. 
And let's see how big a 25 pixel arc is. Uh, I think it's probably that. Maybe a little bit higher up, but that's not super critical. Yeah, let's make it a little bit higher up. So instead of 160, 200, a little bit higher would be like 160, 180. All right, and then in order to do this line part, let's do a move forward. We're already pointed downward, and you can kind of eyeball that this is sort of a square or diamond. And if our radius of our arc from here out, is 25 that means this line is probably twice that to keep our square shape so let's make this 50 see what that looks like okay and now we're just going to do the same thing from here again except um starting with a uh, negative 45 degrees is pointed towards the northwest and an arc left we still are going to pen up and move to pen down the same location that we started the heart from okay and let's turn to northwest which is either three 15 or negative 45. Okay. And instead of arc right, let's arc left. Still a 180 degree arc because it's that full semicircle, except to the left. And then connect with another forward line, same as the other one, 50. Okay, so both sides of the heart are uh, similar but mirrored, and that's it. Let's just throw a hide at the beginning. I'll show it to you, but we can ship it. Does it work? Ship it. All right, that's it. Uh, that works. And uh, yeah, let's um, let do some uh, or 15. Okay, so this is the heart. Um, this is 80. Where's the yeah. animal? Let her see. I write pen up. Okay. So there you go. There is our uh, I Heart CS. And let's see if the checks for understanding are any good. Let me uh, go like this. And just a second. Okay, so checks for understanding, just a quick once over. So we talked about last time about the AP written response portion and how a lot of some of these checks for understanding are about that. This one is sort of a reverse where you're looking at the response 
and deciding whether or not it meets the requirements. This is actually a big ask. And um, take a stab at it. The key is deciding whether or not the student's response is explaining an example of abstraction. Okay. This is, I wonder, does this code actually work for? Wonder, I think this code actually is the iHeartCS. Uh, the student's response is identifying the heart part of the program as an abstraction. We talked about what makes something an abstraction. You can decide whether or not this is an abstraction. This piece of code is or is not an abstraction and explain why or why not the student satisfied the requirements. Okay, multiple choice, what is a function parameter? Okay, um, that's all we've been doing. Okay, what is an API? Um, I don't know, take a stab at this one. I mentioned it at the beginning. Okay, function parameters said that functions with parameters generalize the behavior of more specific commands allow for programmers to use functions instead of duplicated code. Explain what this means to you using difference between turn left, turn right as an example. Okay, turn left and turn left angle. Okay, we had turn left at the beginning, uh, last lesson, and now we have turn left angle that receives that parameter Okay, we talked about why that's important. There you go. Okay, and the last one, um, you only get one guess at this. Um, don't worry if you get it wrong. I'm not going to take points off. We'll go over it at some point. Uh, one of these things is not like the other thing carefully. Which one of these following blocks is least similar to the others? And which of these blocks is least similar to the others? Um, well, yeah, well, we'll talk about that. Either way, we'll put this recording up in a second and uh, let me know if you have any questions.